Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong and welcome to the back office. I unfortunately am sitting next to a rather poorly BBC master. I was getting into it, as you do, uh, wanting to play a bit of Chucky Egg and other games, and then I noticed that some keys weren't working. They all seem to be on the same column, so I suspect there's something wrong with a ribbon cable. So we're going to pop the lid and see if we can find out what went wrong. First things first, I made a list of the few characters that definitely didn't work. The greater than or equals definitely didn't work. Five or seven I thought worked, but appeared not to work at the time of testing. And the less than key seemed to work only sometimes. So I could look up the uh, reference guides to see if they're all connected to any particular line. But I thought, let's just inspect this. And this looks like the previous uh, one I repaired in a video that was a bit jank because Certainly doesn't look like it has a standard ribbon cable on it. So what I might do is just unscrew the keyboard so that we can inspect the underneath. And if possible, we might be able to probe it to see if there's any continuity between those keys that are giving glitches. So just pop those screws up there. Fortunately, it doesn't require the screws to be removed from underneath like the BBCB. There we go. I'm just going to loosen this. This was a strange repair, I think, that someone had to do. It definitely doesn't look right. In fact, I've popped that off without seeing even which bit of pin header that was connected to. And I don't know why they've done this. Something very odd going on. One more screw I think I've forgotten here. So unfortunately I don't have another master here to act as a reference. Come on. Go. So that's the keyboard. And this of course is the repair. And I can see there are a row of pins on this edge here and a row of pins on the far edge. And there's a third row but there's nothing in that centre row right there. So I'm just going to inspect the solder joints because last time that was the bit that was a little bit suspect for us. And I think it all looks okay. There's nothing too obvious in there. So what we're going to do is just get a multimeter and see if we can locate the keys of interest and we're going to put this on continuity mode and I can find the less than or greater than these are the less than greater than keys right here it's like holding chopsticks and actually I'm pushing those but there's no sign of life at all. So it may well be the keys themselves. So what we can do is go a little bit further and with our keyboard keycap extractor, which you can get for pennies, and I advise you get some, you can pop these off without too much difficulty. And here lies the issue. So you've got two options at this point. If you've got some contact cleaner, you can try applying that and hopefully that'll do the job for you. But if that doesn't work, we're going to have to remove that. And unfortunately, that means desoldering it from the back. So let's hope this makes a difference. I'm just pushing that down. I'm just working the keys. these two here we're testing again let's get that on there one on there oh nothing at all ah that key seems to start working oh some life Some 
some life, but it's not great. So let's go through the motions, shall we, to see what we would do if, if this key here is dead. We'll still desolder that. So I'm just going to apply a little solder just to wet the joint. I'm going to take my solder sucker, which has developed a fault, actually. It's not locking. That renders it most tedious. I'm going to repeat the process because that previous solder sucker is so lame. I'm going to try one of these cheapo ones, but I think it'll do a better job. Much better. There, that looks like we can break that bead. So it's very strange uh, looking at this board because it does look, when you see the keyboard, like it's a different division or something because it this does seem to have some sort of adapter on it. And if you recall my, my list of keys, this was the key that I thought was pretty much definitely dead, where I wasn't too sure about the others. So this is the one that's definitely got a problem. Uh, it is possible to open this up and have a clean, but I think I'm going to clear the desk before starting them. We'll start by removing these clips. Just be a bit careful with them. It's a little bit fragile and the chances of breaking them are quite high. I have broken them in the past. I have to say this one was brutal. Actually all the three clips broke off and I had to wedge a screwdriver under the end to get it off. So your your mileage may vary obviously on how you go about this. I don't know if there's a preferred way but just be careful. I don't think it's a problem. I think everything's going to be held okay once you get back in. So just pay attention to the leaves and everything that's inside it. And that's the switch right there. So you can see it's on two twists, two threaded inserts those pins are. So you have a spring here which just pushes a little lever down there, which I'm going to put down very gently. And then that lever is pushing on this, which hopefully is making some sort of a contact there. Ah! Now looking at this, it's actually pretty clean. I don't see any sign of detritus in there or anything else that looks untoward. So I think the best you can do really is just reassemble it very carefully and just hope that perhaps there was some sort of manufacturing error. In fact, looking at it there, you can get it back down. Um, I am just going to clean the tiniest amount in here. Because there was a little bit of green a little bit of greenery. If you're lucky, you have to bend it out, place here, this leaf. And that's the only part here that I think had any corrosion. And I suspect when we put this back together, it's going to be absolutely fine. And if you see a little bit of wear that you're not happy with, you can always use a slight abrasive, such as one of these fiberglass brushes. And just give it a rub. That'll take off any oxidization. All that's left really is to reassemble that. Just the reverse of the disassembly. And you can just poke that through. Now I suspect the reason these things are so hard to remove is because these pins are basically threaded through. They're screwed into that far end, so that's why it put up a little bit of a fight to get them disassembled. So I had to push them down on the bench just to get them to sit home. And we just poke that straight through. Right down, just gonna get my tweezers. Well, I can find my tweezers. We'll just poke them around with this with a knife. 
and that's in. It's not as in as it wants to be though because it doesn't have those white clips anymore, but it's fine. You're pushing down on it anyway. Just make sure you solder that in nicely. You can then just sit back pressing your full stop key for as long as you like until you get bored with it or the character buffer eventually fills and startles you with a system bing.